Okay. Guess I'll start. So this is Crucial Python week nine. And today we'll be talking about argument parsing and how to make things play nicely on the command line. So of utmost importance is our logo. And I don't know how to use a Mac again. So a lot of what we've been looking at in Crucial Python is built inside of IPython notebooks. And these are great for prototyping and kind of getting your program pieced together. But sometimes you want something that'll run just standalone as a script. And usually when you have a program, it has some kind of inputs or parameters, optional switches, things like that. So you want to make things that can handle command line arguments. And if you've written enough of these, you've probably gone through the pain of writing your own option parser, going through the sys.argv list of input command line switches and parsing them one at a time. And that's no fun to do. Um, if you were writing something like this in C, you would use the getopt function. It's pretty standard. Um, and that's where you get our, you know, good old friends, the dash v and dash dash verbose, that kind of thing. That's all getopt. So we'd like to have something similar in Python land. And these days, the module of choice for that is called argparse, and it's part of the standard distribution, and it's super easy to use. So I'm just going to walk through a simple little program and show how to set up the argument parser for it. And then we'll just play around with it and see what happens. So to use argparse, you just say import argparse. That was easy. And I'm just going to define a silly function that just takes as input a lower bound numeric value, upper bound numeric value, an optional list of numbers to multiply and then a flag that says whether or not this should be verbose. And all it does is it adds up the numbers from lower bound to upper bound. And then after it adds them all up, it multiplies by each number in the multiply list. If we have the verbose flag, it prints out the values as it's going. And then at the end, it returns the final value. So this is just a silly little toy function, but it's something that has you know, a few uh, parameters to it that you might want to set at the command line. So let's define that function. OK, so the way that I usually use argparse is I write a separate function, typically called process arguments, that takes in a list of strings, which I'm going to call args. And then it returns the parsed variables from that list of strings. So inside this function, the first thing I do is construct a parser object. So this is argparse.capitalArgumentParser. And the only parameter that I give this usually is a description. In this case, the description string is just says what the program does. It adds a set of numbers, then multiplies by an optional list. Um, and then I'm just going to go through one at a time and add arguments to our parser. So the first one is going to be uh, to set the lower bound variable for our input. So this is dash L is the short form of it. Dash dash lower dash bound is the long form. The destination for this variable is going to be lower underscore bound. So that'll be a key into a dict that stores the option once it's parsed. I'm going to say it's of type int, has a default value of 0, and then a help string that describes what this variable is for. Do the same thing for the upper bound, dash u, dash dash upper bound. This is all basically the same story. And these are kind of simple switches, right? It's one parameter, it's optional, and it takes a single value. But argparse can do much more than that. It can take variable length um, collections of parameters. So for the multiply example, um, that's going to be a positional argument. So there's no switch that you have to apply. It's just anything left on the command line will be one of the values that goes into the multiply array. So those get stored in the key multiply. The number of arguments that it takes is a star. That means zero or more things. Uh, if you want one or more, you can use plus. If you want zero or one, you can use question mark. Right? This is the standard kind of regular expression notation for variable length things. These guys will each be of type float. By default, multiply gets the value none. And then again, a description string. And then lastly, let's 
look at kind of a special case for an option, which is a flag. So dash v, dash dash verbose. Uh, by default, we want this to be false. And the action here is going to be store true. So you don't have to supply a value to this, you just say dash v, and if the parser sees a dash v, it says set this value to true, otherwise it's going to be false. And you could also do the complement of that, store false if you want something to be true by default. So that's all we need to set up the argument parser. Once we have the parser, we apply it to the argument list by saying parser.parseargs, and then this is my input array of strings. And that gives us an object that has each of these values set, either with their default values or, um, or the inputs. And then I'm gonna use the vars function to convert that into a dict. So this just makes a dict out of the object so that we can index it and use it as keyword arguments if we wanted to. Um, which might sound a little bit abstract, but let's take a look at how this might work in practice. So one of the things that argparse does is it supplies a default help. So dash h or dash dash help will print out this and exit. So there's the description that we supplied to say what our program does. And it tells you how to use it. All right, so there's the dash h lower bound, upper bound, verbose flag, and then optional multiplies. And then it says what the positional arguments are, and then the switch arguments. Uh, and this is just constructed by default for us. And you can change the formatting of this. You can add extra prefix and postfix strings. You can do lots of things to this. If you call it with no arguments, so an empty list, we get a dict out of all the values that we wanted, and these are just the default values because nothing has been supplied. Or if we give it a whole bunch of inputs, so here there's a dash L and then a three, so we should have a lower bound of three, long form upper bound of eight, set the verbose flag, and then the rest of these will be multiply values. And that's exactly what you see. And you'll note that these have been converted to the right type because we said multiplies are gonna be floats. It's minus 1.0, 2.0, 7.0, lower bound is three, verbose is true, upper bound is eight. So that's how to use this, um, just kind of in the abstract. If you actually wanted to apply this to a program on the command line, you'd have to say import sys, and then to process the arguments, you would get the arg v, so the argument values, starting from position one and onwards. Position zero is your program itself in the standard kind of Unix way. So, if I can do this, A. Whoa. So, there's just the help again, and now it says the name of our program. It's pulled that from sys.argv0, and then this is the same help screen that we saw before. So now if we run our program, it prints out the number 45, how do we get to 45? Well, let's make it verbose. Okay, value started at zero, then added all these guys, and maybe we want to multiply by 2.5. And now we see it added up, it did that. Um, some fun stuff. If you give it a bad argument, it complains, can't parse it. Um, or if you give it things that don't actually parse, so I tried to say that the lower bound was foo, but it needs to be an integer value. So that causes an error. So this does some basic sanity checking for you. Uh, and it saves a lot of the headache of doing this yourself. And argparse does a lot more, uh, but that's all I'm gonna say about it today. So thank you. Uh, how do you set both optional and uh, the Is opposite of optional? Required? There's, Is there you, like yeah, you can say required equals true. Uh, when you, in here you would just add required equals true to one of the options. Mm -hmm.